Hi students, I wanted to give you some additional examples and explanations on how to build journal entries. Journal entries are a very important part of financial accounting, and so understanding those will help you be successful in this course. So first, let's review our expanded accounting equation. This chart shows each of our elements and how they impact that equation. And then you have learned that debit means left and credit means right. So therefore, items on the left side of our equation, such as assets, are increased with debits. And items on our right side of the equation are increased with credits. Also, anything within this expanded chart that also increases that right side is increased with credits. However, we have two items on the right side of our equation that make it go down, that decrease stockholders' equity, and so therefore, those are considered debit normal balances. So remember, any account can receive both debits and credits. They all have a left side and a right side. However, this chart shows you if we have more of those items, if we're increasing the balance of those items, whether we give it a debit or a credit. Now, it's very important you learn these debit and credit rules, so here's some tricks and tips to help you do that. For one, there's a chart here that shows you that debits increase your assets and expenses while they decrease everything else. Okay, now you only really have to memorize one side of this equation, um, but, and just know that the other is the opposite, right? So if a debit increases an asset, then it must decrease by a credit. If a liability is decreased by a debit, it must increase by a credit. Another helpful tool for remembering your debits and credits is the mnemonic dead colors. Dead colors shows us that for our debits, our accounts that increase with debits are expenses, assets, and dividends. And our accounts that increase with credits are our liabilities, revenues, and stockholders' equity. So I'm going to refer to this dead colors throughout the rest of this presentation because to me personally, this is the easiest way for me to remember. So let's look at an example journal entry. Sam invested 8,000 of his business in his business in exchange for common stock. So as you're building a journal entry, you want to ask yourself these four questions. What accounts am I dealing with? Now remember, there always needs to be at least two accounts because we always have to keep our equation in balance. And so in this case, our accounts would be cash and common stock. The corporation is receiving cash and an owner is investing, which creates common stock. So now you have to ask yourself, well, what category do those accounts fall in? Well, cash is an asset and common stock is stockholders equity. Then we ask ourselves, are these accounts increasing or decreasing? Do we have more or less of these items? In this case, we have more for both of them. Both of them are increasing. The company received more cash and it created more equity in that company. Now we can translate that into our debits and credits for our journal entries. How do we know our debits and credits? Again, that mnemonic dead colors might be helpful for you. So I say I have cash, which is an asset, which is increasing. Cash is a debit normal balance because it's over here in my dead part. And so therefore it would increase with a debit. My common stock is part of stockholders equity, which is over here under my credit part of my mnemonic. And so it increases with a credit. Now I can write my journal entry, debit cash for 8,000, credit common stock for 8,000. Let's look at another example. Here we've purchased $500 of supplies on account. So again, we have to say, what are our accounts that we're dealing with? Well, in this case, it's going to be supplies and accounts payable. We're buying supplies. Supplies is a resource. This is an asset we're purchasing. And then we know it's accounts payable because there's a certain magic phrase in this one, on account. That means we have not yet paid, but we're going to be paying soon. And because we're the ones making the purchase, in this case, it's accounts payable. Next, we say, what's that category? Supplies is an asset. Accounts payable is a liability. Next, we look at, are they increasing or decreasing? We receive some supplies, we're buying supplies, so that's an increase. And we owe more money, so that is also an increase. Our liabilities increase when we owe more money. And again, now we can use our dead colors acronym to help us translate those into debits and credits. Assets increase with a debit, liabilities increase with a credit. 
and then we can build our journal entry. Debit supplies, credit accounts payable. Remember the accounts receiving the debit must always be on the top of the journal entry. The accounts receiving the credits are on the bottom. Let's look at another example. Purchased $4,000 of equipment on account. Again, we need to identify our accounts. In this case, we're buying equipment and it is again accounts payable because it has that magic phrase of on account. Then we say, okay, what type of accounts are these? Equipment is an asset, accounts payable is a liability. And you do need to know what the accounts are and what that category is. That's what we talked about in the previous chapters. So if you are still learning that, you need to go back to some of the previous chapter resources and start memorizing where they are in those financial statements, right? Equipment is an asset, accounts payable is a liability. You need to be able to make that identification. Next, we say is it increasing or, de or de decreasing. Again, we're receiving equipment and we owe more money. So both of these happen to be increasing. And now we can translate that to our debits and credits. Assets increase with a debit. Liabilities increase with a credit. And we can write our journal entry. Let's look at another example. Here we received $3,000 for consulting services. Okay, so now uh, this one's a little bit different. We're not buying something, we actually received some money, right? So we have cash and then we provided a service and that's what we call service revenue. Okay, cash is an asset, we know that one. Service revenue is a revenue, okay? We received cash, so our cash is increasing and we've provided services, we've earned more revenues, so our revenues are also increasing. Again, using my dead colors down here, my asset increases with a debit, my revenue increases with a credit. Okay, so it's not that debits are good and credits are bad because revenues are good things and they increase with credits. Okay, and now we can build our journal entry. Debit cash, credit service revenue. Here we're paying some salaries and wages. Okay, so we're paying something out, right? So that impacts our cash. And anytime our employees work, that's called salaries and wages expense. So we have cash, we have salaries and wages expense. What's our category? We know cash is an asset. Salaries and wages expense is an expense. Okay, are they increasing or decreasing? Well, our cash is decreasing, right? We paid something out, so our company has less cash. Remember, we always do the accounting from the company's perspective, okay? Our expenses are increasing. When our employees work, that is an expense, that is a cost of doing business, so our expenses increase. Okay, so now using our dead colors acronym, assets increase with debits, but in this case our asset is decreasing, so we're going to credit cash. Expenses increase with debits, so we're going to debit for the expense. So notice cash is getting a credit. It is okay for cash to get a credit. Cash does not always receive debits. It's just that cash receives debits when it's increasing, when we have more. Now our cash is decreasing, so it's getting a credit. And so now we can build our journal entry, debit, salaries, and wages, expense, credit, cash. Again, notice the account receiving the debit is listed first in the journal entry. Let's look at another similar example. Here, we're paying our September office rent. So again, it's cash that's being used, and in this case, we would call it rent expense. It's a cost of doing business that we're paying our rent. Again, cash is an asset, rent expense is an expense. Our cash is decreasing and our expense is increasing. And so therefore, we're going to credit cash and debit the expense. And there's our journal entry. All right, let's look at another example. Now we're providing consulting services of 2,500 on account. So there's that on account phrase, right? But this time we are providing a service, right? Whenever we provide a service, that's service revenue. Now our customer owes us money. And when our customer owes us money, that's called accounts receivable, okay? Service revenue is a revenue and accounts receivable is an asset. It's a resource because our customers owe us money. We provided a service, so that increases our revenues. Our customers owe us money, that increases our assets. So in this case, both items are increasing. 
Okay. Then we use our dead colors down here. Revenues increase with a credit. Assets increase with a debit. So our journal entry is a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to service revenue. So we can have a revenue even though our customer hasn't paid us yet. Now here, we are paying $1,000 owed to a creditor for a previous purchase of equipment. Remember a few examples ago, we bought some equipment on account and that created accounts payable. Now we are paying some of what we owe. So in this case, we are using cash and we are reducing our liability of accounts payable. Okay. So we know accounts payable is a liability, cash is an asset. Again, we previously owed money that created the accounts payable. Now we're paying it off. So our accounts payable goes down because we owe less money. Our cash is also going down because we're using cash to pay our bill. Okay, so in this case, both of these accounts are decreasing. So when I look at my dead colors, the dead colors tells you what you do if the account is increasing. Okay, however, if my asset increases with a debit, it decreases with a credit. If my liability increases with a credit, it decreases with a debit. So we're going to debit accounts payable and credit cash. We're reducing both our liability and our asset. Here's another example. Here we have purchased a one-year insurance policy for $600. Okay, when we buy an insurance policy that's good for an entire year, that is a resource to us. And so that is an asset that we call prepaid insurance, okay? And it says we purchased it, so we used cash to buy it, right? And so again, both of those are assets. We're using our cash asset to obtain a different asset, which is prepaid insurance. So in that case, our cash asset is decreasing, our prepaid insurance asset is increasing. Okay. So again, when we look at our dead colors, assets increase with debits. So my prepaid insurance is going to get a debit, but my cash is decreasing, so it gets a credit. And so our journal entry when we buy this insurance policy is a debit to prepaid insurance, a credit to cash. All right, here's another example. Here we have received a payment of $1,800 for services previously rendered on account. So again, if you think back a couple examples ago, we provided a service on account. When we provide that service, it created accounts receivable because our customer owed us money. Now our customer is paying that bill, okay? We did not provide a new service. They're just paying us what they owed us for that previous service. So it is not service revenue, but instead what is happening is we are reducing our accounts receivable because the customer paid us, but we're receiving cash. Again, both of these are assets. In this case, our accounts receivable is decreasing and our cash is increasing. The customer is paying us what they previously owed. Okay, so we know an asset increases with a debit, an asset decreases with a credit. So we are going to debit cash, credit accounts receivable. Note, we do not do service revenue. We only record the revenue when we provide that service. Now we are just recording that the customer is paying off their bill. Okay. Here we're paying a $1,500 dividend to our shareholders. Okay. So what are our accounts here? Cash and dividends. We are paying something, so that's cash. And when we pay out dividends, we call it dividends. And dividends is kind of its own little category down here in our dead colors for now. Cash is an asset, we know that one, okay? Now, when we pay dividends, that increases that dividends account because it's tracking how much dividends have been paid out. We are using cash, so we're decreasing that asset. Dividends is the bottom D in our dead colors, so when dividends increases, it gets a debit. Cash is right here under my dead colors, right, in my assets, but since it's decreasing, we do the opposite, so it gets a credit. So our journal entry here is a debit to dividends for 1500 and a credit to cash. All right, let's look at one last example of a little bit more complicated journal entry. Okay, here we have purchased supplies of 900, paying 125 cash, and the remainder is on account. 
Okay, so we see that magic phrase of on account. So we know that somebody owes somebody. In this case, we're buying something. We're buying supplies. So we must owe the money. So in this case, we have three accounts we have to identify. We've bought some supplies, we've used some cash, but we owe the rest. And when we owe money for you know, our purchases, that's accounts payable. Okay. We know supplies is an asset. We know cash is an asset. We know accounts payable is a liability. Okay, now we purchase some supplies. So we are receiving supplies. And so that asset is increasing, but we used cash. So that asset is decreasing. And then we owe more money because we didn't pay all. We only paid $125. So our liability is increasing because we owe more money. Okay, now we can translate that to debits and credits. So again, assets increase with debits, but they decrease with credits. So my supplies gets a debit because it's increasing. My cash gets a credit because it's decreasing. And then my liabilities over on my other side of the dead colors increases with credits. We owe more money, so my liability is increasing, so it's gonna get a credit. So in this case, our journal tree has three lines. We're debiting supplies for the full cost of those supplies, the $900. We're crediting cash for the amount of cash we used, $125. And then the difference is what we still owe. That's going into our liability for $775. And that's our accounts payable. Okay, I hope these examples helped you. It just takes time and practice and going through that mental work. You'll get faster at it. You'll start to memorize how it works the more you practice. But going through those steps helps you understand why you're doing the different debits and credits. Okay, so just keep practicing, and I know you'll get them figured out.